Welcome to the Whitetail Obsession Podcast with Dave Richmond and co-host Chris Worthing, where we talk and teach everything deer and turkey hunting related. Follow along as we help teach you tips and techniques about hunting, food plots, and habitat management strategies that everyone can use. Podcast 93, Chris is sick again. I ain't sick. I'm All right, sick, good. Sick of Dave. Pot, eight episodes in a row, we start out with Chris is sick. <laughs> This is the last one. Hopefully. Hopefully it's the last draw. All right. So today, first of all, um, are you hunting Saturday? Ooh, the season's upon us. Mm, yeah, Saturday? I'm hunting. You're hunting Saturday? Yeah. I'm Where gonna try going? I'm gonna try two different spots. So yeah. Public? I'm gonna hunt, public? I'm gonna hunt right here. Oh, okay. It is my tradition the first morning, first day. Every year, I go below the house here. Them PA guys and tradition. Everything's mm-hmm. tradition. Yep. Bag on PA guys. Yep. I'm going to hit that in the morning. Mm-hmm. I usually sit down there till about 10. And then I usually walk up back up to the house and get a big lunch and take a nap. Maybe if I need it, and I'll be back in a stand. I'll probably go across the road to destination plots the first night. I don't get real, real excited the first week. I don't know. How do you feel? Well, here it starts so early in September. Um, I used to get really excited when I was younger, yeah. but now it seems like every September 7th or whatever the season starts there, it's like 90 degrees outside mm-hmm. and it, I just, I hate that, but I also do it because I like that chance of a velvet buck. Right. And, and I, I go out thinking the element of surprise, these bucks are starting to daylight a little bit, you know, and eat before dark and things. And there's that, there's that, like you said, there's that chance like last year, for instance, I passed up one of my shooter bucks the very first night I was over there in that stand because he was low on the hit list. You talking about a salad fork? No, th- th- there was a there was a big eight that came under me. The one the and... girl shot? No, different one. That's what I'm saying. This one was low on the scale. So I passed it thinking I was going to get a chance at the bigger ones, mm-hmm. you know, and if it came down to it, I would have shot this thing closer near the end of the season if I had a chance because, oh, my other bucks got wiped out, evidently. And, uh, yeah, there is that first week element of surprise that could uh, definitely pay off. So, well, I'm... I don't know. I don't know what I'll do this year if, if, if a couple – there's a couple over there that are pretty decent. Maybe I'll just whack one the first day. Who knows? Yeah. Well, I'm going to hunt Saturday uh, all day. I'm not going to hunt the farm in PA. I'm just going to hunt uh, some public land here. But mm-hmm. um, things, I have a public land spot that's starting to it's starting to heat up with mm-hmm. bucks. And it, I found this spot last year, and it did it. This is actually kind of early compared to last year from when I started seeing, like, daylight, like, decent, decent bucks. But um, I saw the... You know, a few yesterday in the spot, a couple of daylight bucks, but the, today was nothing. You know, no, no on that camera was no, no action. So I'm waiting toward the end of October to like hit that spot. You know, once I start seeing consistent yeah. daylight, then I'll, then I'll go in. But I have a few other spots, uh, you know, that's kind of away from that area, about 300 yards that, uh, I'm going to try Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, see what happens. I won't hunt the farm until maybe toward the end of October, mm-hmm. early November. I save that for, uh, for the, unless I start seeing like a really good, you know, uh, buck coming in. I yeah. usually, I let that place rest, I let it go, let them feel safe in there. Um, and then I just wait for the perfect opportunity to, to attack, sneak attack. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- I won't, I won't hit the mountain for a week or two. Mm. And, some of that reasoning is because there's a, a rental cabin uh, in the area 
and people are still trying to use it, you know, because right now is fall foliage peak, you know, and people are visiting on weekends and things still and out sightseeing and causing my October law, <laughs> making, you know, people hiking and fooling around the woods still making it hard on me to hunt. So did you just crack your elbows? I did. I did. They're stiff. Oh, this good. guy. Yeah. Um, so today, so, yeah. So let's get to today's th topic. Today is uh, Chris is going to explain why he's weak. <laughs> he's, You're sick. He, <laughs> he's going to explain why he's weak and old. You're sick. All right. So the real topic is Chris is going to explain why he's too short and <laughs> needs a step stool. Oh my! This is getting worse. It's pick on. It's pick on Chris Day. People are already and, tuned off. All right. Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about um, camo pattern, how what trees we like to hang our stands in, and the mystery solution that I found to stay warm. Concealment and and comfortability. How about yes, that? because years I suffered from coldness. I get freaking cold. Like I. I I've always been that way and I toughed it out, but now I'm like two years ago. I just, I was like, you know what? I, I can't take this anymore. I'm, I'm freezing in the winter during a rut, during a rut. I'm, I'm like frozen and I never really paid attention to like good camo. I just bought, you know, regular stuff and it works hundred percent. Um, but I just, I wanted to make the investment into good camo that, you know, that would last me for whatever you know, yeah. 10 years, 20 years. So I made that investment over the past two years. And I've, I mean, I spent probably, you know, $3,000 mm. on, on camo, but, um, I can officially say now that, uh, I'm warm when I, when I deer hunt. So, um, what, when you, when you hang your tree stands, because this is a problem, I feel like people, not everybody, but just making a general statement, um, when they hang their stand, they're silhouetted. Yeah. And they're, they're not paying attention to being hidden, especially, you know, when you're, when you're bow hunting, you know, you're trying to get that 20 yard shot. You need to be concealed. It's not as important when you're rifle hunting because I mean, you're shooting, you could be shooting hundred, 150, 200 yards, whatever. Mm -hmm. So what trees do you like to hang in? If you get the, perfect opportunity what do you what do you try to look for uh i predominantly seem to be around a lot of pines and maple, mm -hmm. maple. so i maples are fairly straight trees um and they branch out real nice and they provide good backdrops so I have a lot of those to climb. Um, if I can't find that, obviously I'm trying to set up somewhere where there's a white oak, uh, a bunch of white oaks. And I'll, a lot of times I'll use a pine tree, a nice straight pine tree with a good backdrop, big green brow, you know, behind me, uh, especially early season. And then I'll just, uh, I'll adjust my camo accordingly. You know, if I have a good backdrop of pine, I have some camo that's got a lot of green in it, and I'll blend in that way. Some some dark hues and some gr some greens and things. Um, you know, as as we get further into the season and the leaves start to change colors, I have some other brands that are some lighter hues and things that that have yellows and reds and things in them you know the color of the leaves when they start to change real hard and then say, rhodo drop. say rhododendron three times no so when the leaves drop then you got a really dark canopy you know i have some dark camo too now so mm -hmm. i've got options i've got lots of options and and unlike you like you're saying you you went out and bought like brands of camo specifically that you wanted 
and it's all matching stuff. For years, I never had matching stuff. I, never I just, I just mismatched everything. I just found what I thought was going to be warm, and I would mm -hmm. mix it and match it. And actually, that's kind of probably good to a deer's eye, anyhow. I mean, if you if you have some confusion going on there, you know, maybe they won't pick you out as easy. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, there, it seems to be in my area, maples and pine is what I like to set up in. Um, of course, if I can get a nice straight oak, too, I, I don't mind climbing a nice straight oak. Mm -hmm. But when they're coming to that tree to eat, it's kind of hard to shoot them. You know, usually it seems like you set up somewhere and they come in head on, you know, and that's not mm -hmm. what you want. You want to be, you know, at a 90 degree angle to that tree they're headed for or something. Right. But, uh, yeah, that's what I kind of like. I kind of like a backdrop. If I don't have a good backdrop, I got to go high. I get yeah. up real high and uh, try to stay out of that plane of sight. And, yeah, I and remember. If I, if I've got to go high. I I make it a really comfortable. You know, I pick a choose a very comfortable uh, lock on to get on, mm -hmm. so that I don't move a lot when they're coming. I remember, um, whatever twenty five years ago. You remember the tree stand that came out? Um, it was the tree lounge. Oh yeah, the tree lounge. Like yeah. the actual original tree lounge. Mm hmm. I think so. Looks huge. Yes. And there was a, they had like a, I guess it would have been a VHS tape back then, but mm. it was like a instructional. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I've, I've I had, had one. I think I had one too. Yep. So I watched that thing as a kid, like a lot, like over and over. And it was like, I think it was like the husband and wife, they were on there and, you know, they talked about height on hanging your tree stand. Right. And if I remember correctly, I could be totally wrong with this, but when a deer is on flat ground and it's looking straight ahead, mm -hmm. it can't see past 20 feet. So when it's looking straight ahead, if you're at 20 feet or above, it can't see you. Now, obviously, if it tilts its head up, you know, an inch or, or something like that, then yeah. But if a deer is walking, you know, and it's looking straight or head down, if you're at that 20 feet level, it's mm -hmm. I, it can't you can't see up that high. All right. So every time I hang a stand, I always go minimum 20 feet max, you know, whatever, 22, 23 feet, mm -hmm. something like that. And I rarely ever get, you know, spotted. Right. Um. But another key with that, which you just said, I, I think you said, is, uh, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I made a lot of mistakes with, you know, positioning my stand. So if you have a deer trail, you know, you want to be offset of that trail. You want to be, right. like, it would be, you know, perpendicular to the trail. I see a lot of guys where, you know, they'll set, you know, they have a deer trail and their stand is right in the line of that deer trail. You right. want to be off that trail, you know, 20 yards. That way, when they're walking, you know, they're not looking straight at you. They're, they're walking, you know. Right. So, um, that, that's a trick, uh, you know, a key with that. And, you know, like my farm now, you know, I have uh, a lot of beech trees. And those beech trees hold them leaves virtually all winter long. So, I have a stand in a beech tree now man, you get in that thing during the, during the rut and those, mm -hmm. those leaves on that thing are still holding and you could do whatever you want and not be seen. And yeah, that's you nice. Know, yep. The other thing is, uh, like you said, pine trees, remember the lucky stand at the old farm? Oh yeah. You know, we literally cut those branches. We cut like a, a hole, cut a window, a window out in these tree in these branches and we climb i mean halfway up we're we're literally climbing on the actual branches mm -hmm. we had a couple sticks but then you climb up the branches and then you step into the trees the stands and we had a window cut out you could do jumping jacks up there and and, and not be seen and it was comfortable too i mean oh it was it was, it was comfortable it was amazing it was a nice um, setup yeah 
So, I mean, that's kind of what I look for now is, you know, and that was funny. That was funny when we, when we went there for the first couple of times and we was walking those field edges and things. And I looked over there and I said, yeah, it looks like a good place to set up. And you stopped me like mid sentence and like, that's exactly what I was thinking. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, it just looked prime, you know, yeah. when I started, standing. when I started making YouTube videos, well, I guess it'd be a couple years after that. But anyway, when I took it serious, when I, when I got in the serious making YouTube videos, you can go back on my videos, 700 and some videos ago. And I have a, a tour of the, of the farm. And I was like, look, I'm going to start recording my, my hunting adventures, you know, this, that, and the other. And I'm walking through that field and I pointed to that tree. I said, that stand right there, I'm going to put a stand in that tree. I'm going to call it the lucky stand. And it's going to be the best hunting spot on this farm. And it was, it was amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, sometimes you just get that feeling, you know, like you said, you you saw it too when we were walking there. You're like that that's a good spot. I'm like yeah. yeah, that's the same thing I was thinking. Um, sometimes you just get that you know feeling. It something just looks like a good spot, you know, right. you, and you you pick it out you know right away. Mm -hmm. So, so I getting back to camo stuff. I mixed and matched some of the stuff was Kmart, Walmart stuff you know from the past some stuff i picked up at hunting shows and things mixed and matched mm -hmm. uh sweaters uh, hoodies you know whatever whatever i could layer up you know that i felt comfortable in and in the last two years i started picking up some some other clothing that was matching mm -hmm. um whole suits and things uh flannel lined uh, Berber line stuff. Um, you know, my warmest coat I ever bought was a real tree coat that came from Walmart. That I was think like, I had one of them. It was yeah. 30 bucks. Yeah. That's the warmest coat I've ever owned. Yep. Had the two pockets own. on the front. Yep. Two pockets and it has a hood. Yep. Yes. I had the same one. And I, I love that coat. Love it. Love it. I don't have um, it anymore. I, when it gets cold out, I put on that coat. Of course, now I have a heated vest and stuff, you know, too. But, um, I mean, there's along the year, uh, over the years, you pick up so much stuff and you mix and match. But, mm -hmm. but why don't you tell everybody your cold story and what you picked up, uh, camo wise that's helped you? So, or any tips or tricks that you've had, like I said, with the, of course, the heated vest and things, but. So, uh, I froze. Um, I used to wear the, uh, um, the polypropylene, yep. uh, base layers, you know, to try to wick the sweat away. Mm -hmm. I guess, I don't know. It never really worked for me. Um, I used to wear the, the real thin polypropylene socks and then pull your regular sock over top of that. It's supposed to wick remember, away the. Remember the ones with the silver threads in it? Yeah. It's supposed to reflect yep. the heat back and. Yep. They yep. just made my legs itchy. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> I tried all that and my feet still get cold, but I'll get to that in a second. What I did with that. But, um, I basically was like you, you know, for 23 years, I had mixed match clothing and, you know, I, I toughed it out. So I made the investment into, um, uh, first light clothing. You know, it's very expensive. But I just said, screw it. I didn't buy everything at once. I, you know, spaced it out. But um, this has zero promotion for First Light. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. I literally I paid for all my clothing. Um, but they have this uh, base layer. And it's, I guess, uh, it's merino wool. And it's called the furnace. Mm -hmm. So when it gets really cold, I wear the furnace pants and the furnace top, which is a base layer. And then um, I put another jacket over that or shirt over that. And then the heated vest. You stole my you stole my thunder there again <laughs> with that heated vest. And then I wear the uh, I think it's the Sanctuary 2.0 jacket and bibs. 
with the heated vest, and I burn up. Oh, like bibs. you gotta have bibs with a vest. That is you great. Gotta have bibs. Those bibs come up with that yep. extra layer yep. up to your up to your nipples, mm. and you throw a heated vest and a jacket. Oh yeah. That that solved all of my problems. But yeah, I had bibs in the past. Mm-hmm. I've had bibs and I've had vest and and I was still cold. Huh. But this sanctuary, I think it's called Sanctuary 2.0, with this heated vest, I burn up. And then I bought a uh I wear I hate gloves. You like cover, too, no. like covering my full fingers. So I wear cut off gloves. Me too. And then I use two heated uh hand warmers mm-hmm. into a uh a hand muff. muff. Yeah, I wear the the where we the uh tube whatever it is hand tube mm-hmm. so i wear all that and i am toasty i mean mm-hmm. i can sit out there you know i got the the sanctuary i guess or the furnace uh hoodie or uh hat or that with a uh, a gator around my neck mm-hmm. um and i'm good now sock wise feet wise my feet always get cold i don't know how if you're the same way but um I invested in, uh, they're called darn tough socks. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a couple different like he- like weighted socks, uh, midweight, heavyweight, whatever. But I wear the thin pair, and then I throw the heavy pair over darn darn tough socks, and then I wear uh, rubber boots. You know, they're sixteen hundred gram uh, rubber boots. They still get cold, but it's nowhere near what yeah. it uh, what it used to be. And I've invested into I'm up to four pairs of heated socks and insoles. Mm. I've I've bought four different things of that, and every one is junk. I huh. cannot I cannot find a good pair. Mm. Um. So if anybody's listening, and they have like a legit experience with heated socks or insoles please share it with us because uh i'm still inter interested in that um but i just i bought four pairs and i'm they're junk huh. L- literally junk I'm, so i'm literally thinking you remember the old boot covers or whatever yes. you used to put them thing i'm literally thinking about either getting a set of them or some really big worn out tube socks or something yeah. and, and stretch that over top of my boot and put hand warmers then in there and let so that heat up. I've done that too. I've done the hand warmer thing and everything and they don't work because there's no airflow. Yeah. Um, they, they That's, just don't, they don't heat up. I tried those, those insoles that you, it's like a hand warmer and you put them yeah. down in your boot. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly what happens. You cut the oxygen off from them, and they quit working. Yeah, yeah, I, I've tried all that stuff. Um, you know. We, what was that brand that I told you about? That uh, I was talking to the guy. He was. It were, they were supposed to send it. Um, Bolt. bolts. Bolt. I, I don't think I bought that brand yet. Um. So maybe I'll buy them and try that. Um, not sure yet, but um, it's just one of them things. I mean, people, does your feet get cold? Do you, do you get cold? Uh, my, my, my toes end up getting cold. Yes. Like um, bad. Well, at some points, yes. And, and primarily because my, I, I, my feet are sweaty. I work so, up sweat getting in. When we so went sick of deer hunting. Yeah, I started carrying spares. Yes. So if I have a long walk in, I take spares with me. So I'll put a pair on, like a cheap pair you know, or yep. thin pair or whatever. I'll walk to the stand. When I get in that tree or at the bottom of the tree, I literally change my socks to a dry pair of socks. Yes. That has helped, uh, def- especially if you're wearing rubber boots. Yes. Um, that has helped tremendously. Mm-hmm. Did you do that during sick of deer? I didn't do it for Sika, but I've done it last. I did it last year 
going into some of my stands because that one stand I walk to is over a mile. Now, do you change it at the base of the tree or do you do it up in the in the tree? No, I do it at the base because I'm old. I can't bend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my stands aren't big. So especially that far, I have to carry it in a mile. So I usually take a real lightweight stand back there and it's a little platform. It's not a whole lot of room to move around on it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I do everything at the base and then I climb up. Yeah, that's what I do. But I isn't it to... funny how you don't sweat on the way out? I know. Isn't that I weird? Know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's a psychological thing or what. The anticipation yeah. of the hunt or something or, or thinking you got to get in there. You got to get in there. And But on the way out, it dries a bone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't sweat hardly at all coming out. Well, it's also cooler. A little bit. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I so let me just say, what do you want to say? I did have I did have a company send me a, a, a mid weight uh, suit. Mm-hmm. It came with pants, coat, uh, a whole hood. What, what should he call it? Uh, I don't know what you call it. It looks like a ninja mask. You know, you can fold you can fold the hat down and just wear it as a face shield, or you can fold it up and just oh. have, your, have your eyes exposed. Yeah, I got one too. I think it was. We call it balaclava or something like that. Oh, what? A balaclava. I've never heard of that. It's, I don't know. It's, it's something like that. But yeah, came with that. They were. The hood, the hood zips off and everything. But it, it's flannel lined or fleece. I guess I should call it fleece. It's fleece lined. And. I, I do like the suit, but I imagine I wore it in spring turkey this year. And it, I mean, it worked out pretty good, but spring turkey is usually, you know, 50, 60 degrees. So I'm, I'm imagining when it gets down in the forties, I'm probably going to need something underneath this or, or mm-hmm. bump up to my bibs or something, you know, but that company sent me that. Um, I bought some Huntworth stuff in the past. I like their stuff. Um, but it, it same, same token. It's, it's going to be only going to be good down to, you know, 50 degrees and above probably. Uh, what else did I get? I got, uh, Mossy Oak, the old bottomland style. You know how all these bow companies are coming out with the old Mossy Oak, uh, uh, paint scheme and stuff on their mm-hmm. bows now. Well, I bought I bought the a whole suit of mossy oak that has uh that berber fleece in it, that real thick piling. I got that for this year. I want I'm anxious to see what that if there's any difference between that and the fleece. I would I want to compare that. So those are three complete suits right there um that I have different different camo patterns um i I wear a lot of real tree and mossy oak stuff too Mm -hmm. you know uh i'm trying to think of some of the other names i've ordered some stuff in the past you know you need to order Hmm. you need to get some darn tough socks yeah it's a lifetime warranty doesn't tractor supply have them no i think it's uh i think it's online only but the, lo- the local working man store here in town has them. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're they're they got a lifetime warranty. Huh. Literally a lifetime warranty. What are they made of? Do you know? Mm, I don't know. They but they got they of? sell like they sell like regular socks for like hiking, and then they got a you know thin pair like mm-hmm. o- over the calf uh, socks, and then the heavyweight. I have a I bought a lot of their socks because they had um. I think last year or the year before they had like buy one, get one free or, or something like that. I ended up, I just said, screw it and bought a lot of them. But, um, I have, I have pairs I use just for, uh, for hiking and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, I check them out. Yeah. Check them out. Lifetime. See, I, I did, I did a little something different last year too. If you recall, um, I remember I bought that pair of hiking boots, waterproof hiking boots mm-hmm. just look like high tops. I bought them last year and my feet weren't sweating as much as they were in a rubber boot. 
so my feet stayed drier, which in turn kept my feet warm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, 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 I'm having a hard time finding a rubber boot that doesn't split and crack after two seasons. So the only pairs that I found that doesn't do that are lacrosse. Hmm. So I've went through muck boots. I went through mm, the brand you have. Yes. Uh, what, what brand is that? Um, That's uh, comes from Dunham's. Yeah, I've had that. I've had everything. Can't think of what they're called. I'm on Alpha, uh, Alpha something, uh, rubber boot. Uh, it's made by Lacrosse. Mm -hmm. No splitting. Most comfortable rubber boot I've ever I've ever had. Huh. See now, I will say that I had a pair of muck boots for like 14 years before they split, and they were good to me. Every pair I've had, I get a year out of them. See, these, those ones I buy at Dunham's, I, one season they're stressed. Mm -hmm. The second season they split. Gotcha. Now, I bought these ones last year, and I noticed they're split right now. Now, I did wear them. I've been wearing them, checking trail cameras and stuff Saturday mornings, out in the real wet, dewy mm -hmm. grasses and stuff. And I'm not, my feet aren't getting wet through the crack. So I don't know how that's not happening, but they're visibly split and my feet aren't getting wet. So maybe, I even I'll, went, maybe I'll get through this season with them. Yep. I even went and bought that other brand. Um, I think it was somebody that worked at Muck and then they ended up starting their own company. I think it's called, is it Hot? Hot Shot? Um, dry Shots. Dry shod. I ended up buying dry shod boots. <clears throat> they lasted 10 months split. Yeah. Feet were leaking. Um, yeah. So, but the stuff, the cross, the lacrosse ones have been, uh, they've been good. Mm -hmm. So I'll stick to them for a while. Yeah. Um, well, the thing is those Dunham boots, I kept, kept buying They're 70 or 80 bucks, you know, mm -hmm. And they last me two seasons. That's ridiculous. I might as well spend another forty and get some lacrosses or something. You know. <laughs> that's how. That's how much these were. They were one. They were like one twenty. Yeah. I've had them. I've had them for quite a few years now. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to try them. But yeah, we we uh was kind of talking before we got on here tonight and thinking, you know. Wonder what these guys are using in their hunts and how they're hanging their stands and things. And we were saying, you know, do you even need fancy camo other than uh, keeping warm and dry? If you can keep warm and dry and you don't, you don't even need camo. Look at all the Fred Bear and and Dan Fitzgeralds and Roger Raglans out there that was hunting around in flannels and you know. It's kind of funny to look back and see how rustic and, you know, how they killed monster animals and they never had camo. Well, <laughs> here, here's the, here's the fact. All of us hunters now, not, well, I don't know all of us, but we're, we're, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, Spoiled. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're buying all this stuff, you yeah. know gadgets and camo and all this fancy name like you don't need that no we're, we're all all of us are wrapped up in this thing in the hunting world with fancy this fancy this fancy that i mean dude back in the day i had what the uh the loggy bayou tree stands where yeah. it was just a platform and you had to bear hug the tree and pull yourself up yep up the tree i mean i had all that now i now I got a freaking seven hundred dollar tree stand that I use, uh, or six hundred dollar, whatever it is, because I was I wanted something light. Like, and but yeah. that's that stand will last me forever, you know, mm -hmm. you know, with the sticks and stuff. I'm nine hundred dollars deep into a freaking tree stand. Yeah, like 
that's ridiculous. Why? I mean, why did I even do that? I'm going to kill you for talking me into it. But right. um, it's just it's crazy. Like, you don't need any of that stuff. You know, it's just I don't know. It, it's, it is what it is. I, like I said, I never I never I always mixed and matched everything. And I figured I'm that sure. that difference, you know, would kind of help break you up too. you know, that the different look mm-hmm. and uh, i i did the same thing I, I walmart whatever's on sale I, I bought um i just got fed up to a point where i was tired of being cold yeah that's all it was yeah i don't know like you said i don't i didn't necessarily do it to be trendy looking because nobody sees me when i'm hunting anyhow but uh it's just some stuff it's nice to have match because i well i was mixing and matching like i said well then i bought a couple jackets and i thought wow these jackets are nice maybe i'll buy the pants to match then you Mm -hmm. know well now i got a complete suit and i like the suit you know that type of thing and that's how it happened for me uh like i said because i don't really care how i look um but like i said i'll be honest when it gets darn cold I go back to my Walmart real tree stuff. Mm-hmm. Those bibs that I wore all the time when you and I hunted together, those yep. were real tree Walmart bibs. They're waterproof. They were, um, I can't remember how much they were. It was like 50 bucks. The coat was 30 bucks and it's got water repellency to it. I mean, after a couple of hours, you'll start getting wet, but it's yeah. got repellency to it, but it's the warmest coat I've got. You know, I've I've been throwing around the idea of getting a nice puffer though too. Puffer? I got yeah. a puffer. Yeah, I was thinking about getting a thin, lightweight puffer to put underneath as a layer. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if I'll need it now that I have the heated vest. That heated vest. You can't is beat nice. it. It's nice. You can't beat that. Cheap. Yeah, it was cheap. The batteries cost more than the vest. Yeah. <laughs> it, it works until but the we... combination. Phew, until one day we uh, we catch on fire, but uh, well, I don't know about that. You're you're going to be up in smoke. One of the companies I've been dealing with, I'm trying to get a deal to get their heated pants. Mm. You're going to be on fire. You're going to be I in get, the tree. If I get heated be, pants, bro, I'm not ever coming out of the woods. You're going to be smoking. You're going to be on fire. I'll I'll start setting up blinds and sleeping in them. <laughs> I'll have heated vest, heated pants. I mean, they they do have a lot of heated. They got heated gloves, yeah, hand, uh, hand warmers. Uh, well, I guess this company. That, well, I might as well just say it, it's New View Hunting, a company that sent me that that uh, outfit. Mm-hmm. They have heated pants, heated vests, uh, heated hand muff. Now they have. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Hand yeah. Muff. Yeah, they got a heated hand muff. Which I kind of thought they might send me one, but I haven't seen one come in my mailbox yet. So, but they did just send me a camera because my other camera, one of the latches broke. So, mm. but they're pretty good to work with that company. Nice. And I'm fortunate that uh, I kind of got on with them right as they was taken off. Mm. So they sent me a bunch of stuff we could use. So that's Pod- enough rambling, huh? Podcast 93. Comment Wrapped below. Up. How do you keep warm? What camo do you wear? Yep. And how's See. your tree set up? Yeah. Later, Gator. See you on the next one. Later, Gator. See you. Later, peeps. Peep. Peep.